Hey everyone, this is Johnny and welcome back. Today I have quite a few uh, propagation updates. We're going to start here with the spring cuttings that I potted up in the last video. Um, then we're going to talk about the summer cuttings that I took um, around June 13th. Talk about how those are doing. Uh, I want to talk about the grafting progress and then a few other projects that I've been working on. So first of all, let's dive into the spring cutting. So if you remember, on April 18th, I showed you that I took a number of cuttings from Japanese maples um, that I have in my collection, and I put those in a propagation box. And after roughly three months, so I took those cuttings on April 18th, and um, I actually potted them up on July 19th. So roughly three months later, and out of the, the quite a large collection, I was able to get four viable cuttings to root. Um, as I mentioned in the past video, some of the ones that didn't root, I tried to give them a second shot, but those ones didn't make it. But these, these four here still look pretty good. Once again, I have three of the orange yellow varieties and one of the Alarian varieties. And um, in the past video, I also showed you that I had a bottom water tray that I had these stuck in. I ended up only doing that for uh, a few days, I think maybe up to a week. Um, but then I realized that I, don't, I didn't need that much water. So I've just been, um, I had these in a shaded area under my Japanese maple bench. And I've just been lightly misting these several times a day and making sure that the soil is all moist. Um, and I think there's, they're going to do well. I think they all still look pretty good. Um, and they've been potted up for a few weeks now. So I think we're doing pretty good there. Now, if you remember, I not only took spring cuttings, April 18th cuttings, but I also took some summer cuttings on June 13th. And I'm really excited about this particular batch because so far it appears like every single one of them is still viable. And we're here nearly two months later. Um, I once again took these cuttings on June 13th and we're sitting here, this is August 12th that I'm filming this. And uh, a lot of these still look great. Actually, all of them still look like they're viable and there's actually some new growth forming. Um, so let's now dive into this um, and uh, show you an update on these cuttings. So as you can see here, this is exactly what I put into this box on June 13th. And two months later, these are still looking great. Um, honestly, it doesn't look a lot different than when I first put it in, except for the fact that I see little terminal buds forming there. That particular one has brand new leaves on it that are forming, opening up. Um, but pretty much all these have these terminal buds on the end, which is a super great sign. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much all, I don't see terminal buds on that one, but most of these have those buds forming. And um, about a month from now, I'm expecting a good portion of these to have a good root system. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that update. And uh, from what I can tell so far, it appears like, at least in my area, it's better for your night temperatures to, to warm up enough so that you're maybe in the high, um, very, very high 50s at the lowest and maybe 60s ideally at night. That seems to be an ideal temperature to get these to root. And uh, once again, the, the success looks like it's going to be pretty solid. Next, I want to update you on the summer lavender cuttings that I took on June 7th. Um, I potted these up roughly two months later, uh, just a few days ago. I think it was around August 9th or 10th that I potted these up. And I showed you how I tried um, an experiment where I put half of these cuttings in a soil, um, potting soil and perlite mix. And then the other half I had put in a gallon pot with just perlite. Um, this is the side of ones that rooted in perlite. This is the side of the ones that rooted in the soil and perlite mix. And so from what I can tell, the soil and perlite mix worked better, at least in my particular instance. I pretty much had most of them root on the soil and perlite side. And uh, I think it looks like less than half on the perlite only side. Now, as you can see here, these don't look especially amazing right now. Um, the method I used was a gallon pot with a uh, one gallon Ziploc bag put over that pot. And uh, I think these will make it. I see some new growth here forming. And I think next season these will look all right. But this, this particular, um, later on in the season, as I started to see a bunch of new summer growth, 
that was more ideal for cuttings on the lavender plants. Um, I wanted to try some, so not in a gallon pot like I did here, but I wanted to try some in these, this propagation box that I um, use for my Japanese maples and other things. And so um, just a few days ago, I took these lavender cuttings. And as you can see, these are a lot more ideal. Um, as I mentioned in the past video, you want to get the stems that have a lot of um, leaves forming at the end. So you can trim those off and those are the points, those, those places where the leaves are coming out. Um, those are the nodes that will produce roots. And you want them to be a little short. You don't want them flowering. Um, and you want them to be the new summer growth that is just beginning to get a little bit um, towards towards the stiffer end, but not um, hard wood. You want these summer soft wood cuttings, semi soft wood cuttings and soft wood cuttings. Um, but as you can see here, um, I believe these are gonna do a lot better. I think the propagation box is the best method. And then also, um, I think I picked these, I cut these at the right point. And so I have good, good hopes for these and um, hopefully I'll have a good success rate with these particular one. I actually have two different varieties here. Um, that I'm trying, um, and I'll give you an update on these in the future. Hopefully, a month and a half from now, we're able to pot these up and get some good-looking uh, lavender plants from these. The next project I want to update you on are some of the grafted trees that I did um, roughly a month ago. I did it several days, so it's not exactly a month ago, but roughly a month ago, um, throughout several days, I grafted nine different trees. About a month later, it looks as if um, seven to eight of the nine look like they're going to make it. Um, so I just wanted to show you an example of four different ones here and what they look like. So this particular one is a peaches and creamed variety. And this one I show that I grafted it onto my seed grown rootstock on July 2nd. So we're, we're a little bit over a month here, a month and 10 days roughly. And um, as you can see, leaves still look good. So this is looking good. What I do with this as far as care, and I'll talk more about this in a future video, um, but for the first, for the first like two, three weeks, I had this plastic bag over it, this Ziploc gallon plastic bag, and I, I would mist it two to three times a day, and I put it over it, and then I would um, seal the bottom of the bag for that first two or three weeks. Then uh, roughly, for the last week and a half, um, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks roughly, I've been leaving the bottom of the bag open. So I slide it over and then I leave the bottom kind of open so it allows some air. And then last night for the first time on all nine of them, I went ahead just for the night time and took the bag off of them. And I'm just trying to slowly acclimate them as it seems like they have taken, you know, a month later, they still have good leaves. If it looks like they're taking um, and uh, the graft union looks like it's healing up right, then what I do is I want to gradually ease it out of that humid environment. And then eventually these should be, and maybe in the next couple of weeks, I should be able to just leave these in a shaded area. Once again, I'm putting these in a shaded area, but I should be able to not have a bag on these at all. I may still keep it misted for a little bit to keep them moist. Um, but that one's looking good. The next one um, here is, is one that I'm excited about. This is an Alarian variety. Once again, I did the same process with this one um, with the bag over it for the first period of time, opening the bag and then last night taking the bag off just for the nighttime. This particular one um, I grafted on July 6th. And when I grafted it, it did not have these leaves here, the ones that kind of show pink there. Uh, there's a couple new growth there and then there's new leaves right there. So this one is looking like it for sure took because not only does it look healthy and good, but it's producing a lot of new growth. Um, so that one's looking great. This next one is an amber ghost variety. Once again, um, this particular one I also grafted on July 6th, so the same day as this other one. And uh, this one is looking good as well. So the leaves still look great. You can see that there's brand new leaves coming out there at the top. Um, also obviously a good sign. Um, and from what I can tell, it looks like the graft union is healing up properly. I'll talk about next care steps in just a second. And then lastly, I wanna show you this one. This is an Alpenweiss variety. Um, once again, 
this one was grafted on July 6th. And um, so you can see some of these leaves here. Those are the leaves that I left, but you can see new leaves there for me. Um, you can see these new leaves have recently opened up. Those are brand new. And when I look at these various areas, there's a new leaf section coming out there. Um, and there's various new growth throughout this. So this one also looks very promising and like it's going to take. Um, as far as next steps, what I'm probably going to do is go through and some of the ones that I've put on a lot of new growth, I'm going to go ahead and trim back the, the understock tree just a bit more um, and try to encourage as much growth into this scion that I've grafted on as possible. Then um, I'll, I'll leave this part here till next year. I may trim it back occasionally throughout the year and um, maybe a little bit, but as we move into next year, when this comes and leafs out hopefully in the spring, and I know that it's good and successful and that this union should have healed up very nicely, then I'll probably go ahead and cut back this particular uh, tree somewhere around here, above a node here, I don't want it to die back too far. And then I'll gradually cut that back until it's a pretty clean cut um, once that is you know, good and healed. Maybe at the end of next season, I will cut this back um, pretty close to where the grafted union is. Um, so it definitely takes patience, um, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, once I get through this entire process, I wanna kind of show you that and show you the process. But I wanna make sure since this is my first time grafting, that I'm doing it correctly and I'm showing you methods that actually work. I'm also working on a few other propagation projects uh, like blueberry cuttings, some pomegranate cuttings, um, raspberry cuttings, and some things that I'm working on. And I'll talk more about those in the future. But once again, this is really an experimental stage for me. Um, I have experience in seed grown Japanese maples. I've done that for a number of years and those have done well for me. And I've shown you that process, how I dig those up under the Japanese maples in my yard. I've had pretty good success with that and I've had uh, quite a few healthy trees come out of that. Um, I've also had pretty good success now with cuttings. I'm starting to have good success with those. Uh, several of the cuttings from last year still look are looking great. Of course, I've shown you the ones that are looking good this year and my summer cuttings are looking good. So I'm starting to have good success with that, figuring out a system. Um, it looks like I'm going to have good success with my grafting. Um, but once again, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure that you subscribe so you can get some of these updates. And uh, I do thank you for watching. And until next time, thank you so much.